Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our children of God, hallelujah. Uh, we give glory to God for another day, another time that God has given unto us to come before his presence. We exalt his holy name. Day 18 in this Lenten season that God has given us opportunity to witness 2024. We pray that God will give us more power to witness more in Jesus' mighty name. Let us bow down our head and pray. Jehovah, Jesus Christ, Holy Michael, Father Lord, we thank you. From the beginning of this season till now, you have been our God. You are the one that strengthened us. You are the one that has been with us. Be thou exalted in Jesus' mighty name. Father, Lord, this day 18, go with us in Jesus' mighty name. As we go into your word, O oh Lord, expand your word and give us new understanding so that we can be renewed in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for people that are joining. Thank you. God's will power Ashake. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for joining. God bless you, ma. Uh, we want to praise the name of God once again. The 18 in our Lent period. 18th day. And please, as you are joining us, if you look at the comment side, you see where you can give us star. Just look at that star. Keep on. Just give it. Uh, give us star. Like and share. God be with you as you doing this. In Jesus' mighty name. God, the purpose of going into Lent or remembering this time is for complete renewal. Basically, during the olden days, in the scriptures, we have them going to their, whether the Shiloh or the temple, wherever they want to offer the sacrifice, they go year in, year out to offer sacrifice for their sin. And these are what they are doing. They are Going to those places with ram, cattle, lamb, goat, donkey, as many, depends on what the type of sin and what they, they have to do for the sins based on what is written down in Moses' law. So Moses has given them all the things they need to offer for every of their sins. And these are what they've been doing day in, year in, year out. But glory be to our Lord Jesus Christ who came and sacrificed himself once and for all for all of us. And that is called atonement. That is bringing us back to, to God. Bringing us back to God. So that is what he came to do. And we've said it in one of the series that the sin that Jesus paid for was the sin that Adam committed in Garden of Eden. And we read it that by one person, sin came into the world. And by, by another person, then we what? We have liberation from all our sins. So basically, the sin he paid for was the one that com was committed at the Garden of Eden. And because of that, Every one of us, all of us, we now what? We carry the sin. And that is why when David was praying, that even when he was in his mother's womb, the sin has been with him. And thank God for our Lord Jesus who came to redeem us and atoned for all our sins. Now, the purpose of this period 
is for us to have a complete renewal. What we used to do before, then we have to move away from that and come to do new things. Complete renewal. And how can we be renewed if we are seeing sin? How can we have that complete renewal if still sin still abound in our life? Now let us look at that Romans chapter 6. What it says. What shall we say then? I'm, starting, I'm reading from verse 1. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And Apostle Paul answered the same question. He was the one that was asking and then he answered it himself. And he said, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How can we who has witnessed a renewal, who has witnessed a rebirth, who has witnessed sanctification, who has witnessed regeneration, how can we still go back into the sin that we used to do before our rebirth, regeneration, before the sanctification, the purging, and then having a complete renewal in Christ. Now, the question that was asked is this. If we continue in sin, how will the grace that we got in atonement, the only thing that was given unto us in atonement is grace. That is, after he has committed himself to our sins, then grace was produced. Before that time, there was no grace. There was no mention of grace in any part of the scripture before that period. But it was after the crucifixion that we have that, yes, we now have grace to do so many things. So, and we have it that even when we assist sinners, God, because he loved us, sent his only begotten son unto us. And all these things are what has happened. All these things are what we have seen all these things are what we have learned but how are we now moving forward how do we see ourselves in the renewed life that has been given unto us how do we see ourselves how do we see ourselves in the new life that jesus gave unto us and that is what we are looking into today let's move forward know you not that so many of us were baptized into jesus christ were baptized unto his death so after when at uh, the baptism of not not the water baptism we're talking about now there is another baptism that is bigger than the water baptism that was why john said this one that is coming after me we what we baptize with fire and what is that that is holy ghost and we remember in acts chapter 2 when holy ghost came it came as a fire, tongues of fire, upon all the disciples that were at the upper room. So, what God has given unto us, or what we have, what we enjoy, what we enjoy, is complete renewal. When we move away from that sin, and that is why, this scripture is asking us, how can we ask grace to abandon our life? How can we ask grace to keep on moving in our life when we are still in sin? That, don't you remember that we died with Christ when he died with us? God bless you for joining. That's my, that's the unity with our visionary. God bless you, my God bless you for joining. Dr. Tamia, God bless you. God bless you for joining. Uh, Brother Abiola Oluaro to me, God bless you for joining. Hallelujah. So we are in the 18th of the Lenten period. We started from the one which was asked Wednesday, and today is the 18th. And what we are looking at today is the complete renewal. And what are we getting from that? What the we have that in that Romans chapter 6 that the only way that we can be renewed fully is when we move ourselves outside the sin because the grace that was given unto us is a gift 
and it's possible for us to lose to lose a gift it's not something that we produce by ourselves we are not qualified to have that we are given that grace as a gift based on some something that somebody has done to qualify us to have that because christ died and used his blood as an atonement and i've explained that several times that if you divide that word at own atonement into three places you are going to get at one moment so meaning that we have been made to be at that moment with god he stood in gap and it make us to become one at one moment so it's called atonement and atonement is what does he did and when he has done that why are we still abandoning sin and we want grace to 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 keep on moving in our life so grace cannot go far because as soon as the sin comes forth in our life, it will withdraw the gift of grace that is given unto us. And the Apostle Paul tried to explain it for us that this grace that we have is a gift. We can lose it. The prodigal son lost the grace he has in his father's house. He thought he was the one that was doing it. He thought the whole, thing, the whole thing was done by him. Not until, not until he found himself in a strange land and he couldn't do what he used to do when he was in father's house. Then he understood that it's not him that was doing it. Something was upon him, which was the grace of the father that was upon him when he was still at home. And because of that, that grace qualified him to do so many things. And he thought it was him that was doing it. And what now happened? As soon as he moved away from the place of grace, he found himself in the place of destitute. And that is what, that is what he lost. And he, when he reasoned within himself, and he came back and said, Father, I'm a sinner. And that is what God is asking from us today. Where have we missed it? This fasting and praying time should not just go even if you are not fasting, if you are not, but you should be praying as you even look in, inward. And if we go to one of our series, you see where we started from. That the first thing is that God needs to search you out before you know what is wrong with you. You cannot just go to the church and, Father, forgive me, I am a sinner. You are only confessing with your mouth. The type of true repentance that Christ is looking for in our life is heart repentance not mouth repentance most of the one we are doing in churches when when we read some psalm or when we read some things is they are all mouth repentance we just use our mouth to say it but it's not from our heart because if it comes from our heart it will take a repentance is not something you just say now and you believe it's, it's, it's gone no it's a series and we made mention of when we when god was when god searches you out that's number one then it would it, that would lead you to you acknowledging it that truly i'm a sinner and after you have acknowledged your sin then you now go before the lord and start asking for forgiveness of sin and, we, and part of the series is that when you are asking for forgiveness of sin there's going to be a series of things that will that will, that will happen in your life number one you are going to be purged. You are going to be purged. So that is why it's not going to be a mouth repentance. Heart repentance needs purging. How? There is something inside of that heart that makes you to continually sin. But that thing needs to be removed out. So if it is just from the mouth, it can, you cannot change. But if it's from the heart, then it, that thing has to be taken away. And in that time of dissecting your heart processing it and bringing those things out is you are going to follow so many things you are going to lose what you love so much which is maybe what what you enjoy in those things you are going to lose them what you the friends that you keep that makes you to sin you are going to lose them all those things are purging time you are going to go through that purging time and then when you move from the purging time 
you are going to get to cleansing. It's going to cleanse you. If you go to Psalm, if Psalm 51, you will see the process. When Nathan came to David, it was not David that realized. He was even covering his sin. And all the time he was covering his sin, what happens to him? His bone was washing hold until Nathan came and told him, you have done this and God has found you out. And that is why, that is how he was able to go before the Lord and with penitent heart. Uh, Abraham was a friend of God. Abraham was a friend of God. But God found him out in Genesis chapter 17. God told him, walk before me and be blameless. Walk before me and be blameless. And, we, and, and I, one of the series that we have done, we are able to explain it that. Don't let us forget that. Abraham was 75 years old when he was living in his father's house. In his father's house, his father's house, he, they, 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 what they do is they are ad, adult worshippers. There are so many things he has learned in his journey of life that he knows. If it, if it was one incantation that they used to say unto those idols they worship or whatever, those things are a part of Abraham when he was living. God did not wipe off his memory. What God only told him is that, Abraham, leave your father's house. And I'm going to take you to a place that you are going to occupy. I'm going to make you father of many nations and this and that. So Abraham still carried the memories of those things that he used to do in his father's house. Those things that he learned is still part of him. That thing was still part of him. So when he was working with God for 24 years between that 75 till we get to Genesis chapter 17. When God found him out and told him walk before me and be blameless that means that god had knows that he was doing some things that was not part of what he's supposed to do and immediately he bowed down his head and worshiped god and god reenacted the covenant and in that same vein god changes his name from abraham to abraham and sarai to sarah so you can see that it was after he acknowledged when God told him, walk before me and be blameless. It's, and I've said this several times that Abraham has paid tight in, in, in chapter 14. Abraham has won so many wars in this same chapter 14. Abraham has cried to the Lord in uh, chapter 15 that you don't give me a... And Abraham has done so many things for God. But that does Look at him. He's church goer. He knows about God. But there's still something... That is still in, in his life that only God can just find it out. And as soon as God was able to bring that thing out of in, into his life, and he recognizes himself and he really bowed down before the Lord and worship. And immediately, those things that has been given unto him for 24 years came into being immediately. Came into being immediately. So you can see that for 24 years that he was still struggling with God. He was only complaining. He was crying. Something was in his life that God needs to bring, bring to focus and ask him to live. And as soon as he left those things, what now happened? He was able to get the promise of 24 years in just talking that he, the day he repented from, uh, from his sin and worshipped God fully, he got back. Those things that he missed. Hallelujah. So these are the series of renewal. You cannot just be using your mouth to confess your sin. And you think that is total. No. You have to have a renewal from the heart. The, the, so the purging has to go inside your heart. You have to leave. You are, you are going to leave some friends. You are going to leave some food you are used to do. What you indulge in, you are going to leave that. So those are the things that will make you to have a genuine repentance and after purging we, are, we make mention of cleansing it will now clean you up clean you out of those things that you have you are used you used to do and what now happened after the cleansing you are going to get what you are going to be able to move closer to him because when we sin one of those things that we used to lose is the presence of god we lose the presence of god when we are sinners. And that is why if you read that Psalm 51 very well. He cried so much. That restore unto me 
the joy of your salvation. And he made another, he made mention of another thing. Cast me not away from your presence, O Lord. He said, cast me not away from your presence. So meaning that at that time that he was in the, that scene, he was still king. He still have all the priests that was still playing for him uh, at, the, uh, at the glory of when he was to, when he was to do every, anything. But there's something that is wrong inside of him. So until we go inside of ourselves to see where the thing is wrong, we cannot have at repentance we can only have mouth repentance and that is why we have so many churches we have so many uh, mountains people are going from one place to another but this as things is not changing why because they are not changing within they are only changing outwardly and the outward appearance will go when you when you meet with physicians of life it will go immediately and when you have that penitent act to repent it will open you up into greater things that you don't know before hallelujah and paul was talking to us that don't we know that when christ died we die with him at the baptism of christ we are baptized too and now the barrier of christ too, we are buried within then why are we now misusing the grace that he has given unto us do we think that grace is meant for us the, let me let me give an example of grace Maybe you're a pastor or uh, you're a minister of God or any uh, whatever it is. And God has given you a uh, gift of healing, gift of uh, miracle working, and all, all, the, all, all those gifts of prophecy, whatever it is that God has given unto you. Because God, because of the grace, you can still perform in those offices. You can still do things because god wants to use to save some people so you are you are only working under the grace of god not you that is doing it but despite what you have sinned god still allow you to be able to heal some people he allow you to do certain things and you are now you look at that yes my sin did not cause anything yes doesn't come i can continue to sin and that is why we find ourselves where we are because we are already missed it we've missed the key we've missed the whole thing and we are still be able to do what we used to do we thought the power is still in us it's just a matter of time before you understand that the power is no more inside it's just that you are moving in grace and over time that the grace will soon leave you because grace will not stay where the sin inhabits and that is why paul was telling us how can we continue in sin and ask grace to abound so it's not that day that you that you started it that is going to take you off but uh, over time over time that you 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 see yourself doing those things those those wrong things and you're moving you are moving and you think ah yes i'm still performing i'm still giving messages i'm still doing uh, i'm still doing healing i'm still doing miracle i'm still doing this one or whatever even if, if you are not even a uh, the uh, uh, apostle or whatever whatever you're something even where he has put you you can still abound in that but the thing that was going to leave you is that grace and as soon as the grace is taken away then you now see yourself where it is and that was what left david when nathan told him about what happened he understood that grace that he has left him he only has to pray and pray and pray and god has to what give bring back mercy mercy was returned mercy and he called he gave him the sure mercy instead of that grace because all those things that he did caused him to lose so many things as a king but god just have mercy upon him and gave him sure mercy that make him to stand or make his seat to stand but when he passes through the purging when he passes through those things that happens to him we all know the story how his son came and fought with him how he lost so many things all these things are what and what the enemy will always make us to go through when we what when we sin against god so god is speaking to you is speaking to me today that can we abound in sin and ask grace to abound grace will not 
move under sin because we have that gift we have that gift that god uh, that christ gave unto us at the atonement at the time he was he, he was crucified he took all our sins and because of that he gave us grace and he took our sin then how do you now now transfer it back by returning the grace back to him and we taking our sins back that's what is now telling us that that is not how we need to move as christian and in this period that we 40 days and i've said this several times in one of us in all of the series that we have 40 days is not just we don't just have those days for the fun of it go and check it in history 40 days is a day of having a having something permanent in 21 days you can form a character in 21 days you form a character but in for, in 40 days you make the character to to stand in 21 days if you want to change anything if you keep on doing it every day every day for 21 days at the end of 21 days you see that your body will have been used to that but for for that thing to be permanent in you you if you go over 21 to 40 days it will be you will see that unconsciously when you are not even thinking of those things it will start happening so you can see that 40 40 40 40 was serious in the scriptures it was so many 40 40 days for christ 40 days for moses 40 days for so many people in the, so it was not just coincidence it has reason and what is that that god wants to do in that 40 days he wants to do a total renewal to make it permanent in us so now let look at that Romans chapter 6 verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in our mortal body that we should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead. How, what, what is that say, telling us? We are alive from the dead. You that are nobody before, you became alive in him when he took us from where we are and he positioned us and he called us a royal priesthood, a peculiar person. He called us his priest. We, are, we were once in darkness, ah, but he brought us now into his marvelous light so that we can what be sons daughters in his kingdom king and queen in his kingdom and now these are who we are that we have now misused and we felt it doesn't matter nobody is seeing me nobody's oh, not nothing is happening now everything now go a wire in our life in christendom how many People, are we winning? Are we not just recycling ourselves within ourselves? And then at the end of your day, we are not getting any anybody change because we are just seeing, we make that sin look good. Everybody's seeing it as right. So nobody's going to correct anybody because he's trying to correct this. So somebody else has done it. And then because of that, we lost the grace. Like my church, we call the grace that was given us was Luli. And where is that grace? The grace that before we say a word, God has answered it from the before, before it come out of our mouth. But today we now languishing. We 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 strive to bring something out. We what we don't used to do now, we started doing that so that we think that will bring those things back. What needs to be done is to retrace ourselves back. Where have we missed it? What have we done? that make us to lose their, that grace that was upon us. So, but for us to have a complete renewal, to have a complete renewal from where we are, to where we supposed to be, we need to do this. Number one, see where you have missed it. Don't wait for somebody to point it out onto you. Search yourself. Search your heart search every part of your life what have i done that make me to lose what i used to do with ease before remember when you want to do something when you when you are still vibrant in him 
before you say this, it has happened. Before you say that, it has happened. But now, it takes you longer time. You have to go through so many things before it's, before you even get small thing happening. Don't you see that something is wrong? Basically, we always appoint all our problems to the witches and the wizard. And I've said it and I'm going to repeat that today. God created them. Or God allowed them to be there so that when we, the children of God, when we misbehave, when we fail him, he will not push us to them to, to torment us. So that is why no matter how many times you ask them to die, to, to that fire should kill them, it will not happen because they are instruments that God is using to bring us back onto him. They are instruments that if there is a call upon your head, God will position you in a place of warfare. You will be going through one, 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 one warfare or the other until you not come to reason within yourself that, why am I going through this? Then you now see that there is a call upon you. Or when you now see the call, you see that those walls will just go away without you, you even fighting over them. So those people that you see that are tormenting you or they are tormenting something concerning your life, they are there. And uh, yesterday we made mention of Job and Satan. Satan could not penetrate the shield that was that covered Job. It was not Job was not even does not even know that Satan has been parading his uh, compound for a long time. He has been parading that place for a very long time. But it was when God now asked him, "Do you see my friend Job?" That said, ah, "Is it not because you have made a shield round him?" So that means that. If we are at one man with God, if we if that atonement work for us, no power of the evil one can penetrate the shield that God will use to surround, to surround us. The shield will just be there, and it will surround us, and they will not be able, able to penetrate. So if the Satan that is the head of them could not penetrate until he has permission from God that you take that shield off and see if, he, if he's not going to deny you. And we can see that even when the shield was taken away, it still stood his time. So that is to tell you that shield that God used to cover us is always based on our righteousness with him and the grace that is upon us. But as soon as we misuse that grace, as soon as we move ourselves out of the grace, what now happens? We lose the shield and then, then we have this openness everywhere. I everywhere then this one comes in that one goes there this one start it will start happening because there there is an opening in our in our life for the enemy to enter so now god let us finish that passage in verse 22 verse 22 or let's move start from verse 21 what fruits had ye then in those things where where of ye are now ashamed for the end of those things is death and i'm going to explain that death now when the uh, when the bible makes us understand the wages of sin is death most of us are looking at physical death though that would be the eventual thing that will happen but the death that the bible makes us to understand right now is spiritual death it's a spiritual death you are going to die spiritually at the Garden of Eden, at the Garden of Eden, what happens to Adam was spiritual death. God removed the spirituality in his life and left and living with what with with uh, the physical life. Just go and start using your body to, to start working, and in the sweat of your work will you eat. And now, before that time, he was doing things. In Eden, without any problem, there was no rain. There's no nothing, but he was still in the ground without having any, any of his hands scorched. He called all the animals by the name, and God said, "Yes, that is that is perfect." But now, as soon as he sinned, God did not he did not die physically, but he died spiritually, and that is what happens to us. You see, before those sins came into your life or to my life. You used to pray, things happen. But now, how many things is 
I mean, this happens now. You see yourself doing this and doing that, doing that, and then you see yourself weakened because sin is a burden. It weakens us. So let us move, let us round it up with this. But now, being made free from sin, we are made free from sin by the atonement that He gave unto us at Calvary, right? And become servant of God. We are reading Romans chapter 6, this verse 22, last verse. Ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is dead, but the last one where we're going to look at is, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The gift of God, which we call grace, is a gift from God. It's not things that you made by yourself. It's not just you, you, you are qualified to have it. God decided to give you that grace so that you can, per adventure, you can turn back. I love this song and I've, I've sung it in all, all the series. This series, 18. Tomorrow is going to be 19. I, that song is, say, so that means that he is ever ready for us to come back. God wants us to come back unto him. He's still waiting for us in his mercy. He's a compassionate and merciful God. He has the power to do all things. And he has power to forgive us. And to round it up, I'm going to use the prodigal son as an example. Because that is the epic of repentance epic of repentance if you want to go and study it very well you see that to get total repentance you will see that that thing that happened the parable that jesus gave is just a parable of repentance because after he lost the whole thing and he came back home but one thing we need to i want to point out today that today is this when he was far off he was not even very close to the house he was far off but his father recognized him at far off. How did he now recognize somebody that has left home, lanky, with wealth, and the person has lost everything, and nothing was in his hand. And things will have changed in his life. But he still recognized him. And what is Christ trying to point out for us? What Christ is trying to tell us is that even when we have backslid, when we have moved away from it, the God still loved us. He still wash, uh, wash, washes over us. He always look at us and waiting for us to come back. He washes over and he waited for the sun. And by adventure, all those time, all those places that the, the sun went to, he sent somebody that has been washing that sun. So he knows what the figure of that sun was at, at the point in time. Likewise, our God. When we have moved away from him, he washes over us. He will still allow us to come back. Per adventure, we are going to repent. Per adventure, we are going to see that we have missed it and come back to him. So he has that power to bring us back onto him. With that what? With that we struggling to do anything. So the only thing is just you accepting to come back. You just believing that it is time for me to Yes, to have it. Fasting is not the only thing that will make you to come back, but genuine repentance that comes from your heart and not the one we do with our mouth. The one we do with our mouth is just the one that that's why we just, as soon as we confess that sin, the next moment we are already doing the, what, we, what we have confessed. So that means that we are not having any, anything, nothing is changing. But for it to change, we have to change inwardly. It has to be from inside. And Another thing is this, don't, repentance has nothing to do with my father cause it, my mother cause it, uh, my husband cause it, this one cause it. If you still have a way of saying somebody is responsible for what you are doing, you are not yet ready for true repentance. Because true repentance has to do with you accepting it that you are the one that is wrong. Because no matter what, one thing that God will not tamper with is choice. We choose what we want to do. We choose to do it. Even if somebody asks you to do something, you still have to write either to reject or to accept. So once you accept 
to do what that person has suggested to, unto you, that means that you make the choice of accepting it. It's not you are not forced to accept it. You make a choice. So and the choice is what God will not tamper with. We choose to do whatever we want to do. And then when we find ourselves where we where we are now, we need to look at our choices and see this is what makes me to go wrong. Let me now retrace myself back onto him. And as we retrace ourselves and look inward, inward, inward and see where we have missed it, what we have done wrong that makes the situation not to work as it used to work before, God will forgive us in Jesus' mighty name. He said, not what come from outside that defile a man, but what come from inside, because the workshop to do evil, the workshop to do good comes from inside, and that is where we want to have repentance, that's where we want to go into, that workshop is what we want to go into and do things, and refine tune it, and take away what is not supposed to be there, and then place in, put in place what is supposed to be there see tomorrow when we meet again in day 19 today the 18 tomorrow to day 19 of this lenten season i want to leave you in the power of god the power of the most high and i want to appreciate everyone that has joined and i want to appreciate you uh god's will, god's will power ashake god bless you ma abiola ariwola god bless you dr tamia god bless you ma god bless you for joining god bless you and i want to appreciate every other uh, that's my son Olubenga Shenjini God bless you for watching uh, SPD God bless you uh, Omola Badu God bless you Ma God bless you for coming online I, I pray that God will always, uh, we minister unto us in Jesus mighty name to do it in his own way in Jesus mighty name and I want to appreciate uh, the wife of one of my guy in, when I was still in uh, Onupetes that is a uh, uh, Venable Omidiora, uh, the wife is online. God bless you, ma. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Baba Funsho Edun Jobi, God bless you. Uh, Olushomi, God bless you. Imane Mafurukon, Baba Mafurukon, God bless you. And for everyone that are online that I cannot see, I want to say that God will surely give us total renewal in Jesus' mighty name. Until we see tomorrow for day 19. I want us to go in peace and power of God in Jesus' mighty name. Let us give seven hallelujah to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Don't forget to, to love it, to like it, and to give us star. Where you used to comment, there's a place they put star there. Not those uh, emoji stars. Those are not stars. They are just emoji. If you go down, say, you see where star is or you go up where you see sister there just give us stars so that this thing can continue god bless you for doing that in jesus mighty name amen see you tomorrow for day